Explica is not here. Daniel is a field open source software technologist and working currently for both at his end. Um, his uh, interest is on embedded systems and his IP communication. And um, he has a long track record on optimizing transport layer protocols. And more recently, he is also the author of a nice book that is titled Embedded Systems Architecture. And if you want to have a look into this book, it should be available at the registration desk. And today he is talking about PLS 1.3. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Daniele. Um, I'm an embedded software engineer for Wolf SSL. Uh, some of you may remember me for Beacon TCP or other projects. Uh, um, I've been involved in this, on the sideline of this project for a while. Um, finally, I'm approaching on uh, my first contribution, hopefully. There is an open uh, PR, and that's uh, the thing I'm uh, going to talk about today. Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction on uh, SSL, uh, the way we see it. Uh, I was kind of expecting other people talking about the same thing, so probably this will be a bit redundant, uh, especially if you already know what this is about. And then I will introduce uh, uh, um, some novelties on the new protocol uh, for this itself, that's TLS 1.3, I think. And, uh, and then I will describe uh, my first attempt at uh, contribution to Riot OS. Um, so it's uh, a Wolf Cell uh, uh, package based on uh, the work that uh, a colleague of mine already initiated one year ago. Um, uh, Caleb already did. Uh, it's first sport, and I progressed a little bit in the direction that the community uh, a bit requested to, to go, and I hope that I met some of the expectations. I hope that we're progressing in the right direction. Um, so, first of all, why is SSL important for the IoT? Um, this is uh, mostly on, um, uh, based on uh, our uh, professional experience uh, in the field. Uh, also my own, but also by working uh, in the last few months uh, uh, with Wolf SSL, um, as the things uh, we we've learned from uh, from the projects we 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 worked on. Uh, so, what is SSL? Um, SSL enables security. You probably know that. Uh, but we like to define the security. Uh, well, of course, this is uh, written in literature as uh, uh, confidentiality, authentication, and uh, integrity, and uh, uh, SSL takes an approach uh, to solve these three uh, problems at the same time. And, and of course, we know the problems related to uh, the lack of each one of those three areas. Uh, so we'll go just a bit uh, faster on this part. Uh, most important is that it provides end-to-end -end security. Um, I've, I've seen the ex excellent uh, um, Mingle talk this morning, and uh, uh, the speaker mentioned this uh, data link security uh, encryption scheme. Uh, but most of the time, uh, what we want to do is use the same standard protocols uh, uh, on both sides, on both endpoints that are involved in the communication. So we don't want intermediate nodes to have or at least this is, uh, this is uh, the, the, the vision of the SSL in general. Uh, so intermediate nodes shouldn't be involved in the, in the encryption or authentication or um, integrity verification uh, of the data that we are exchanging. Um, and of course, uh, the goal is to use the same standard protocols and ciphers that are uh, already uh, available in the information technology uh, infrastructure. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? Uh, it's okay, we are on a different technology level, but uh, we still want to be, uh, um, as was mentioned also in the keynote, uh, compliant to the, to the protocols, to the standards, the open standards uh, that already exist. Um, and of course, this gives us the possibility to uh, uh, to have uh, to, to enable built-in security uh, for most popular communication protocols, uh, so HTTPS, uh, SSH, other TLS, um, and even those that are 
IoT specific, even uh, if there is not much love for MTTT, as I, um, it's probably because you used to uh, some limited implementations of the protocol, but actually the specification is pretty good, and especially if it's used in a secure environment, uh, that's uh, still something that uh, uh, that means success uh, for many IoT projects. <coughs> Um, as I mentioned, not depending on a specific uh, technology or data link encryption means that we don't have to uh, delegate security to a uh, third party, maybe mistrusted, maybe proprietary software technology uh, for the first, le first leg of the communication path. Um, security IoT, uh, it's something that we can actually achieve today. Um, a lot of embedded connected devices uh, require secure communication, either to appear, uh, so we're talking about M2M -M security, or with the cloud infrastructure, uh, so it's more like in IoT world. Um, the only way to make this interaction um, easy um, is to use, as I said, the, the existing family of protocols, even if we are on a, on a different uh, technology domain. So we have, of course, we have seen that already um, different challenges in the, in the implementation approach, uh, especially related to the uh, resources that are required uh, from the code size point of view, memory usage, uh, but even computational time and power, even to make um, um, easy operation like uh, we've seen the hashing function uh, from the previous presentation. It was uh, using the most secure time for the whole operation. Um, and of course, SSL relies a lot on, on those encryption algorithm uh, bricks. So it's going to use many of those operations in a row. And of course, you have to take into account how to integrate this solution uh, in existing uh, TCP IP stack, operating systems, random number generators, uh, timekeeping, etc. So there are a few things that are more complex as usual because we're working in a better world, so we don't have POSIX standards or fancy things like this, uh, or um, giga, gigahertz of processing power and gigabyte of memory, whatever. Uh, so what's our approach at 12 is cell? Uh, everything is done, clean room implementation, uh, and it was designed from the beginning for constrained devices. So we uh, embrace the small footprint limitations, uh, and we know about uh, um, the restrictions that are on our uh, resources. Uh, but at the same time, designing software for embedded devices uh, means that hardware acceleration that uh, makes, makes you gain a lot of time for operations uh, uh, that can be performed in hardware rather than in software. Of course, we've seen that uh, this is uh, most of the time not the case because uh, of the shelf devices don't include hardware um, uh, optimizations, but in an industrial or in a production scale, uh, when you're designing your own chip, you tend to use technologies that help you in that. And of course, we do support those hardware components within the library itself. And we do assembly optimization for different architectures. Uh, we focus specifically on, uh, on ARM, of course, because, um, uh, because the market uh, is going a lot in that direction, uh, which helps a lot gaining a few CPU cycles when it's critical, um, for what's possible by running uh, the critical code or the, the, the most um, time critical code into uh, um, optimized uh, assembly um, routines. And we know about the, the, the memory constraint, the, 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 the code size constraint, and so that's why we also tend, of course, to be modular. Uh, to allow to scale down to, uh, to cross one devices and uh, even 
to uh, implement a single algorithm or a single feature uh, and come out with, with, a, um, with a version of a, a Wolf itself that just fits for the application that's, uh, uh, that, that we're going to implement. Uh, the portability uh, is another thing that um, it's, it's a great uh, advantage while working with the uh, Wolf itself because um, I've been receiving also feedback even here on how easy it is to, to port it to, to different platforms. Um, I shouldn't say that because that's most uh, of my work. So, uh, well, um, so what I do indeed is porting uh, what we sell to different operating, real time operating systems, embedded operating systems, and environment. And uh, thanks to this callback uh, based API that we will see uh, um, in implementation. Uh, it, is, it is actually easy to uh, integrate with different uh, kind of schedulers and uh, uh, blocking or non-blocking functions uh, of the underlying transport, uh, which might be TBAP or might be something else. Uh, it's very major code base. I think this company is gone for uh, more than eight years now. And uh, uh, it's, it started from scratch. And... Uh, we do um, have cooperations with, uh, with a lot of companies uh, and, of course, with a lot of uh, uh, open source projects. Uh, um, and we have a professional support in the sense that uh, there is an help desk uh, uh, that's open 24 hours. And uh, it's not just for our uh, commercial customers, but even for uh, other free or open source project that, uh, uh, that wants to cooperate with us and are looking for information that they couldn't find uh, anywhere or are looking to solve a problem uh, that we might help. Uh, we tend to, uh, to make a release once every three months. And most important of them all, we're not just open source, we're free software. Uh, so what we sell is released with the GPL license. Um, okay, so that was a bit to give the context, but actually the, the actual focus of uh, this talk is to present a little bit from a non-cryptographer non point of view, what are the novelties in uh, TLS 1.3. Uh, how do we get there? It's like SSL has an history of uh, um, coming out with the new standards um, uh, every couple of years or so, and uh, SSL 2.0, 2.0 are already considered insecure nowadays. Um, most of the time, when uh, uh, an old family of protocols uh, is marked as is insecure, it doesn't depend on the implementation. There are like actual design flaws uh, that made it to the standards, and then uh, they, would, um, they had been found vulnerable later on. Um, so 1999 TLS 1.0. Uh, which is the continuation of uh, the actual SSL standard. So just change the name from a uh, secure socket layer to transport layer security. Uh, and then TLS 1.1 and DTLS, which is datagram based TLS, as you know, so it's based on, uh, on UDP connectionless. And TLS 1.2, that was the uh, existing standard, and still the most adopted nowadays. Um, is out since 2008. And there are a few reasons why uh, the TLS 1.2 uh, is not uh, the top technology anymore, and especially because of a few vulnerabilities in the design that have been found. And, uh, uh, but also, the raise of new needs for new features that, that we'll see as well. So, the major improvements of TLS 1.3 are, first of all, a faster handshake. Um, the classic uh, TLS 1.1, 1.2 uh, handshake uh, is done in, a, uh, in two round trip times, uh, which of course adds up to, if you're using TCP, the TCP handshake, um, the three-way handshake, uh, so it adds up to four. And then if you're making, for instance, an HTTPS request, uh, then it, you, you count at five. And if you're at uh, a 400 milliseconds distance, because 
you're located in the other side of the world, that means that you're already waiting two seconds before you can start exchanging data. Um, the full uh, handshake process is now encrypted after the server load, which means that uh, there are less vulnerability uh, possible during the handshake pro process itself. Uh, there have been a few uh, encryption algorithms that have been deprecated in the meanwhile because it's considered insecure. And uh, other features that, of course, were the source of all evils uh, that uh, have been discarded uh, uh, after some uh, goofy attempts to patch uh, TLS 1.2. Uh, so about the handshake. Uh, one RTT means that the client uh, can start sending data to the server immediately after the first server response. Uh, there is also support in TLS 1.3 to send data at the first hello, which means zero RTT. So it means that uh, the client can start sending data immediately um, when, when it starts the TLS and shake itself. Um, less RTT means faster and shake, less traffic, less power used, and uh, well, reduce, reduces the cost. And uh, in some, in some uh, specific environment, that could be a peculiar advantage for, for the AT, uh, for embedded in general. Uh, so this is the, the classic uh, TLS and shake, as you see, um, the client initiates the communication, sending a hello, and uh, the server sends back the certificate, uh, then there is a key exchange, uh, uh, possibility to change the, uh, uh, the cipher, etc. And this takes, uh, as I said, two complete round trip times before uh, encrypted data can be actually exchanged between the, the two peers. Um, a TLS 1.3 is just one RTT, and then the client can immediately start sending data uh, together with the last uh, uh, packet of the um, uh, of the handshake. This looks a little bit like uh, TCP fast open for those who of you that are um, confident with that. Um, of course, TLS uses uh, a variety of encryption algorithms. Uh, those are the, the, the uh, complex uh, encryption, uh, verification, uh, um, hashing uh, functions that I was mentioning earlier. And uh, if you uh, put together um, uh, many of those algorithms together for, for, for different purposes, you end up with, with something that's called the cipher, uh, cipher state. Which means that uh, a server should need to be negotiated, needs to be the same between the client and server. Um, so what what happens is that there is a negotiation during the handshake um, to find a match between which algorithms are supported by both sides to get a matching cycle. Um, and that's what, uh, in the end, uh, you need a public key mechanism uh, uh, um, asymmetric uh, block or stream cipher and uh, hashing function for verification. Uh, you assemble all those together, you end up with a cipher. And they need to match. So, in TLS 1.3, um, there is this uh, cipher seed negotiation, uh, just works a little different than TLS 1.2. Well, most important, uh, uh, New sets of algorithms, uh, new cipher suits have been added thanks to um, the introduction of new um, stream ciphers and verification mechanisms. Um, and there are some uh, algorithms uh, that are not uh, advised to use anymore, um, especially uh, SHA-1 and MD5, because they've been proven to be uh, prone to uh, collision um, uh, attacks. So they're not cryptographically safe anymore. So those have been deprecated and um, they left the TLS specification. Uh, a few features have been removed. Uh, some of them are, as I said, the source of all evils, like the, the custom uh, DFM groups. Uh, it's responsible uh, uh, for uh, the freak attack. Uh, uh, let's call the other one. Uh, 
um, uh, several uh, well documented attack in the cryptography world and uh, changing this cipher spec uh, is uh, that mechanism uh, that allowed a uh, malicious attacker uh, impersonating a server to downgrade uh, progressively um, to uh, a weaker cipher set uh, by negotiating uh, multiple times. So from TLS 1.2 to TLS 1.1 to TLS 1.0, back to SSL uh, 2.0 that uh, we know is, uh, is vulnerable and, uh, and basically select a weak cipher to, to, to start an attack. That's still out there on, uh, on many TLS 1.2 implementations. Um, so many of those obsolete uh, features uh, um, are not long part of, uh, uh, of this specification. So, and uh, many algorithms, uh, a few algorithms have been added. Um, the Structure Twenty is particularly useful because it's a very efficient uh, stream cipher, and uh, I've been using it in a few projects uh, with LP1 uh, um, devices because. Normally what you have there, this payload is really small, so like uh, 10 or 12 bytes. And it is difficult uh, to have a block cipher applied uh, successfully uh, with no possible predictions uh, um, on, uh, on, on such a small payload, while a stream cipher works much better. Um, and it's also reasonably fast. Um, also, ED25519, that's, um, or the, the um, let's say, the X25519, uh, that's a key exchange protocol, which is reasonably, uh, uh, reasonably fast because it uses very small, uh, uh, very short uh, private keys uh, sites. Um, so even generating a, a, a common uh, ephemeral keys uh, between two um, uh, the, the two peers uh, doesn't take so long on a on a on a device that's not running uh, with with a very fast uh, um, uh, CPU uh, speed. So once again, uh, it's it's nice to look on the new standards because. Probably, probably, they tend to, to solve part of our problems that we have in embedded, that we are not fast enough or reliable enough to, uh, to accomplish this kind of operations. Um, and note that most servers, uh, a lot of them, already support uh, um, some of these protocols, like Chacha 20, Poly 1305, uh, is present on a on many um, uh, ciphers it offered uh, by, by web service on the internet. And browser are still a bit lagging behind on, the, on the picking up on the support for TLS 1.3, but we should expect those uh, mechanisms to, to replace uh, classic electric curves or even RSA that are still in use around. Myself, I do already have um, 20, 25, uh, keys on GitHub, for instance, uh, uh, to, uh, to to use Git over SSH. So as my SSH keys are already uh, 25519. Um, another important thing it was session resumption. Uh, older TLS version uh, would allow you to resume a previously interrupted session uh, by just sending you an ID in here that says, hey, I'm this client and I want to resume the communication. Well, the problem with this approach is that the server needs to keep track of the state of all the, of all the, of all the client. And since there is no one-on-one -on -one, uh, correspondence between SSL sessions and uh, TCP hosts, actually, it could be that uh, the same server is distributed over multiple machines, so servers even had the problem of keeping track of the IDs, distributed uh, IDs uh, over all the server farm in order to, to be able to, to resume uh, interrupted sessions. In TLS 1.3, uh, a ticket is stored on the client and it's encrypted uh, 
with the private key of the uh, with the public key of the server. So basically, only only the, the server can decipher and use that uh, that ticket that actually contains all the information needed to resume the um, the connection with the uh, the the session that was interrupted with client. Uh, so this means that a self-contained ticket uh, uh, now doesn't uh, in just there is no need anymore to, to store the, uh, the, 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 uh, the hash table with IDs uh, on, on the server. And you can even have distributed services on multiple physical servers because you don't need to keep track of that. It also means that a TLS 1.3 server uh, on implemented on embedded device uh, doesn't have to keep track of this in RAM, so it will use less resources. Again, another benefit uh, that probably we notice more than, uh, than the information technology infrastructure. Um, so, OWF itself, of course, uh, we uh, support TLS 1.3. We are uh, one of the early uh, implementers of uh, TLS 1.3, and uh, um, we, we would like to see it developing uh, as fast as possible in, uh, in spreading in the, in the IoT um, in the IoT world uh, for the benefits we've seen, but also because it means improved security, it means uh, um, less resources used and uh, um, better key management uh, and uh, more IoT friendly algorithm. Um, so. Lately, I've resumed on the work that uh, Caleb started last year of porting uh, uh, WolfSL on Riot OS. Um, so, the starting point for me was uh, the existing implementation. That was uh, in, a, in a, the very first PR was actually most like um, a self-contained example. It was not even a package. Uh, it had a very basic make file, but I was just a bit more like a proof of concept uh, that uh, uh, I can build uh, a secure uh, application using TLS and TCP IP with a traditional TCP IP stack. Uh, of course, your first request was, uh, please make it uh, into a package. That's absolutely right. So that's what Caleb did. He, he, he has made a package. Uh, with the TLS examples uh, uh, distributed in examples directly. And the first uh, Wolf cell package uh, um, still requires uh, a traditional TPAP stack. The examples themselves uh, um, were linked uh, to LWAP in it. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, they would not compile on, uh, on the reference target uh, or anywhere else where LWAP could not fit. Uh, so your comments at that point was, yeah, uh, what you're doing now is uh, you're using the POSIX API on top of the traditional CPIP stack, which we support, but we actually would like to go in the direction of a more portable situation where we can actually run this on top of uh, uh, Ripple 6 uh, on uh, 15.4, etc. So, you suggested uh, to use the stock interface. Uh, what I've done so far uh, is use the SOC UDP um, um, API integration and build the callbacks for, for, for this integration inside of Office SSL uh, and just provide on top uh, of the existing UDP IP TNRC uh, support. Um, Yet another level of uh, uh, abstraction uh, for, uh, for, T for TLS SOC. This time, uh, I was inspired by the, the SOC UDP and the SOC UDP T um, uh, structure. So I ran my, my module SOC TLS in, in the hope that um, we can bring this from simple DTLS once we have a concrete TCP support also to actual TLS. And uh, so the package uh, also comes with a module that's a stock TLS that basically sits on top um, of the stock UDP interface. 
and uh, it's a helper to create uh, um, and it's, it's, it's a bit like the first presentation we've seen uh, this afternoon it's it's a helper on um, on, on top of the UDP socket to provide with a, the most familiar interface possible uh, a similar API so you have a create function and uh, start session function and then you have the read and write which are of course part of a cell already uh, and most important uh, this doesn't require the socket interface anymore because it's based on the socket UDP so much less resources I can use GNRC I don't need uh, to carry the um, dependence to a WP or any other um, complete traditional TCP/IP <laughs> implementation. Uh, what does this object do? Is it groups together uh, it, all the, the objects needed for for establishing the session. So it's the session itself, uh, uh, the um, uh, the, the context of Wolf SSL uh, might be server client and, uh, and the UDP uh, SOC object itself and the endpoint uh, that's used to establish uh, that specific TLS connection uh, session. And uh, it is used by the underlying Wolf SSL implementation as a context object, so it's a bit shared between the two. Um, for now, we use uh, random UDN32. Uh, Peter will tell me if I need to change this because <laughs> with the new. Uh, but of course, uh, what we need here is uh, it's very important. Uh, it's uh, uh, crypto cryptographically valid uh, uh, random uh, um, number generator. Um, we need high quality random number generation because that's basically the pillar where the whole uh, encryption and SSL support uh, it's based on. For, for many different uh, operations. Uh, so, I'm a bit uh, willing, I'm com totally willing to hear from you guys because I'm, I'm a bit lost on what, what's going to be the next step for me. Uh, I've started uh, implementing something uh, um, on top of GNRC TCP. Uh, I'm not sure how mature this implementation is. What are the um, future plans to have a uh, simple TCP implementation without carrying uh, all the, um, uh, the weight of, uh, of a traditional TCP stack. I would go in the direction, uh, if this is the case, of a SOC TCP implementation, which resembles the SOC UDP, uh, which was very easy to port for me. And of course, on top of that, then applications can be ported, uh, HTTPS demo would be pretty trivial. Uh, of course, we do have Wolf and QTT uh, uh, ready to go, uh, whatever uh, port is ready. Um, and why not some remote shell with, uh, with SSH, because we can. Um, and of course, um, I'm already in contact with some of you, um, so I, I look forward for the, for the coding sessions uh, to uh, to progress in this, and please hit me with any feedback, including uh, bad ones, uh, because all we want at this point is uh, to work together to, to, to get the best solution. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a great comment. Uh, you talked about the generosity TCP. Simon is here. Where is it? Identify yourself. Uh, you can uh, discuss with them. All right. We did this. All right. Thank you. Okay. Then thanks again. Thank you. Um,